DB with Roscoe. My name's Charles. I know this is not my normal content, but I do like to build things, and uh, I'm really excited to show this. I've been, I've been waiting to make this video, but I wanted to make sure this thing was uh, complete, and I would say it's about 90% complete, and I just couldn't wait any longer. All right, I, this is my backyard sauna. I've wanted to build a sauna for years. Um, this is what I came up with for this backyard and this setting. I'm really excited to show it to you. I use four by sixes. Um, if you follow my Instagram post, you know I've been sitting on that glass door for five, six years and finally found a use for it. So let me show you how I made it. Um, let me know what you think. I, I really enjoy this thing. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. So how I built this was um, I built a platform. Well, let's start at the very base. I have a pressure treated four by sixes setting on cement pads and they are buried in the gravel because I wanted this building as low as possible. So those pressure treated four by six are lower than the, uh, the ground. And then um, across those, I put pressure treated two by sixes, built a regular platform, boxed it in. And a lot of that is filled with gravel as well. Uh, and then on top of that, I, I covered it with the some plywood. Now I kind of cheaped out. I didn't use PT because it was getting expensive. So what I did was I bought regular exterior grade plywood and I put three coats of black exterior uh, paint on it. There's a gallon of paint, paint on the floor of this thing. So hopefully that's going to work. Hopefully it's not going to rot out from the water when I pour it on the stove, but I, I don't think it will. I guess we'll see. Um, and then I put a silk plate around it, pressure treated on top of the, uh, the, the plywood. And then I just started stacking my four by sixes. Um, I went with this because if I would have did a, done a conventional stick build, I would have had to uh, finish the outside, insulate it, and finish the inside. I felt like this was a, a nice compromise because I have my out, my exterior surface, my insulation of the four inch walls, and uh, my interior. So we'll see. And how I held them together, I used these timber lock uh, eight inch screws. Actually, I think they're 10 inch. And some galvanized spikes that are also eight inches, eight or 10 inches. Um, I countersunk them. So when the logs shrink, and they will, the heads won't stick up and, and make as big a gap. Now they're already shrinking and they're already gapping and I have a plan for that. Um, once I feel like it's shrunk all the way, I'm gonna go through and use Volca on all the seams, try to caulk it very neatly. Um, we'll see. So after building the whole thing, um, I really like the exposed corners but they weren't all perfect so I boxed them in and um, actually before I boxed them in I oiled the, the all the end grain just I think I had three quarts of oil on the end grain and then I boxed it in and I sanded everything this thing is sanded inside outside the ceiling the wall everything and there's uh, three quarts of oil out here I think four quarts from here down uh, which leads me to why I made such big overhangs because I didn't want any rainwater. Because this isn't cedar, um, I do want it to rot and the splashing of water. So that's why I did that. Um, I am super happy with it. it so far, it's great. Um, let's talk about the roof. Before we get to the, the roof and the ceiling, let's uh, talk about the front of the building. These are just some old dowels that I had, and I uh, used my Foster, fast, fast, fast foster bit, I think is how it's pronounced, and uh, drilled a couple holes and uh, at an angle and tapped them in just for a towel rack or a robe rack, whatever. These I had laying around, just some, I think my sister, my oldest sister gave them to me and they hold a tea light. Oh, we just thought that'd be kind of neat to put up there. Um, I've never put a light in it, but when I do, I think it'll look nice. Uh, like I said, this door came from a shower out of a bathroom that I remodeled and I've just had it in the basement and I think I think this is the coolest thing in the whole sauna is this glass door. I think it makes the whole thing. Um, as you can tell, I'm pretty giddy about it. All right, let's take a look inside. All right, inside I finished with the... Uh, same trim or same cedar boards that I used on the floor and that I made these benches out of. The, the inside walls are all sanded. I didn't lacquer them or treat them uh, because I didn't know how it would react to the heat. 
I thought about it because I thought it would lock in the pitch. And yes, there is some pitch dripping in here. Um, but again, I wasn't really sure. I wasn't sure how I was going to react with the heat. If you guys know how some spar varnish would would work in here um, when it gets to about 150, 170 degrees, let me know. Um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see the light coming through. I do have gaps. I'm okay with it. It helps uh, feed the fire. But like I said, once it completely shrinks, I'm going to seal it. I'm going to chink it and Vulcan it on the outside. Uh, the benches. I made two different heights. Uh, this is obviously a little warmer than and this one down here. What I did was I took this uh, three and a half inch cedar boards that I used on the floor um, and, and this trim, and I ripped them into three equal parts, rounded the, the edges, and uh, spaced them out with a quarter inch uh, plywood. I'll show you how I did that. I think I have a video on that. Uh, I'm super happy with these. I have a frame. Uh, against the sidewall and the back wall. So they are very solid. Um, I built the lower bench the same way. The floor, like I said, is painted uh, plywood. And then I used a construction adhesive and screwed the cedar floor down to that. I, I couldn't afford to build the whole thing out of cedar. Uh, but I did want some cedar accents on the inside. So I'm super happy with it. Um, I haven't put any uh, sealer. I'm not sure what I should do. I'm still trying to figure that out or leave it natural. I don't know. Um, let's talk about the roof. So the roof, um, I have these four by sixes, 10 feet long, three of them on a six foot uh, wide building running the whole length. And on top of that is uh, what we call it car decking, but it's it's a tug and groove two by six decking. Um, so I have that on top. And on top of that, I used a, a, a Grace Ice and Water Shield. And I thought that would be enough. And, and I, I struggled and I, I thought, why take the chance? Um, so what I did was on top of the Grace, I built a two by four uh, rim all the way around that I could fill with dirt. Before I did that, I lined it with a pond liner, uh, I don't know, or an eighth or 16 inch uh, thick rubber pond liner. Cause I just didn't want this thing to leak. So I did that. And now what I'm doing is I'm filling it with leaves and dirt and I'm gonna grow uh, our vegetation on the roof. I just think that'd be kind of neat. So we're gonna give that a try. Uh, I don't know how well it's gonna insulate, then I don't really care. It's It gets plenty warm in here the few times that I've used it. Uh, the wood stove I found on Craigslist. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but I think it really turned out cool the way the basket holds the rocks. And at that, I used the sauna a few times before I put the rocks in there and it definitely takes longer to heat up uh, now that those rocks are there. That's a huge heat suck. Um, so I have to plan for a little bit more time, but once it gets up to temperature, it stays there, it's more consistent, and I can pour more water on there and uh, um, get more steam. So I'm super happy with that, and I think it looks really cool. Um, behind the stove, I used uh, just a hardy board. That's what it's called, hardy board, cement board. Um, that you'd use under your tile. And I just, because I wanted the stove as back as far against the wall as I could, I left an inch air gap behind that. Um, so far, I haven't had an issue. I certainly do keep an eye on it. Um, I hope that's gonna work because I don't wanna bring the stove any further out into the space. Uh, how I got the chimney out, uh, I left a 16 by 16 hole when I was stacking the logs, I, I left a hole out the back and I'm running my pipe out the center of that. It's a five inch pipe, um, or it's, it's a four inch pipe inside of a five inch pipe going out through the exterior wall. And I have a piece of tin that I cut like 20 by 20. And uh, that's my thimble for going outside. I, I would like to have gone straight up, but I didn't want to compromise that watertight roof. So we, this is the route we went. We're working on some draft issues. 
I think I need to make my chimney a little taller, but um, it's only at initial startup. Once this thing is running and the, and the smoke pipe is hot, it drafts beautifully. So, um, what else can I tell you about this? I put some uh, cement pavers on the floor underneath the stove. Don't really know why. I guess I was worried about heat, but it really doesn't get that warm down there. But I think it's a nice uh, accent. Um, wow. We don't really know the temperature that it gets in here because we're still waiting on our, our wood bucket, and our, our wooden ladle, and the temperature gauge for inside. But you, uh, you sit in here for a half hour, you've got sweat running in all your parts and places. So I, I would imagine it's 150, 175, I really don't know. Uh, it definitely does get steamier when you pour the water on the um, on the rocks. So uh, this is my sauna. Oh, I probably should say, if, if you're curious, I believe I have 64, I think I bought 64 four by sixes by eight feet long, um, three 12 footers, um, and I returned a few. I bought extra because I wanted to be able to pick through the best ones. Um, and I did that. And I still have some rough stuff, as you can see. Um, but I also thought it made a little character. And a couple things uh, slipped by the uh, my uh, quality control and made it inside the building anyways. All right. Uh, and then I don't know how much decking um, I have on the roof. I can't remember. It's, it's probably 8 feet. The roof is 8 feet by 12 feet. So you can figure it out. Um... I don't know, all in all, I think I probably have four, five thousand dollars in this. I'm still trying to uh, buy some dirt for the roof and I still need to build my front porch. Other than that, it is done and I am happy with it. All right, if you guys have any questions on how I built this, what I did, why I did it, please put it in the comments. Um, I am not an expert uh, sauna builder. I, I don't, I don't know if this is wrong. Put in the comments, tell me I'm going to die in here because of the wrong wood and it's going to be a toxic fumes. I don't know. But this is my sauna. This is what I came up with. Uh, it seems to work really well uh, for us so far. All right, everybody. Just want to share with you. It's been a fun project. Let's get back to some overlanding. Die, right, everybody. See you soon. Bob, why don't you go someplace else?